So describe your early years. Describe your village and your daily life. Absolutely. Um, our village had 15 Kashmiri Pandit families. Uh, we had um, pretty much the rest of the, the, the families are, uh, were uh, Kashmiri Muslims. And uh, there were Kashmiri Shias, uh, which is another sect of, of, of uh, Muslims, Sunnis. Uh, we also had a village uh, just close by, maybe three or four miles away. It was called, the name of the village was Arun. And that had Sikh population. Um, so it, we had a mix of population. There would be Muslim. Muslims were in majority. But we had, um, as I said, around 15 Kashmiri Pandit families in the village. Put it that way. So how is your relationship with your, you, you described the various religious populations, how is your relationship with those? The relationship, uh, what had happened in Kashmir over the course of time, the spiritual, um, spiritual part of, of, of uh, Sufism, there's a lot of influence of Sufism in, in Kashmir. And you could see that through the people's interaction, where people, um, you would, with the way they would interact um, in the social settings in terms of festivals. For example, when I was born, my dad had, you know, kind of, you know, visited a dargah um, in, uh, it's called uh, Mukam. Mukam is the name of the place where there used to be a darvish, and darvish and was kind of a Sufi saint. And that was kind of the belief, it, which would go around. He would sing Kashmiri Chakri, you know, like, you know, as, as a setting where all the families would sit together. Um, and, you know, the whole, you know, all different families will come together and um, have religious festivals. For example, when my Yagnupavit was done, uh, we had all the 15 uh, families in the village did a, a group Yagnupavit. So that means we had almost 30 to 40 kids together. And we did a Yagna Pavit as part per the Arya Samaj Vidhi. So which was a little different than what it was done before. So it was a lot of revolutionary thoughts. So you felt very open practicing your religion uh, in a Muslim majority state at that time. At that time, absolutely, it was open. Um, there were instances where you know we could we would see we saw um, challenges. Um, one or few of them being is when there was 1947 war between India and Pakistan. Uh, our family, because we're like family of 15 Kashmiri Pandits, pretty much all the families had to move to Srinagar uh, because the villages were not safe because it was surrounded by a majority of the Muslim population. Uh, but then what happened when the war was over, they and the families came back. Uh, similarly, in 1965 and 1971, 1971, not so, but 1965, what I heard stories from my, my parents and my mom that they had to, and there was no bus service, so it was pretty much walking um, and, and either you know, horseback, and you would kind of travel miles, and they had to leave their home and their belongings uh, and, and move to uh, Srinagar from Sholipura, which is our village. And in the process, um, means they, their lives were shattered because they had to then rebuild, left, and then what happened is um, their home was vandalized, and they, it happened in 1965, 1971, 1947, um, during India-Pakistan partition. And uh, the stories I heard from my, my grandmom was that we used to have a big house, and, and uh, the tribal invaders came in. They, they had the big festival and singing in our home, and they, they lit our house um, into fire. Um, and, um, and when we came back, then we had to rebuild our homes. That's a very, very tragic story. How did, uh, how did you survive? Did you, at what point during this did you leave? Um, what happened is um, I was a student, so I was, uh, when, when this happened, I was a student um, and outside the Jammu Kashmir state. But my, my brother, my sister, my mom were living in Srinagar. Um, so what happened is, um, there was a family of Ganjus in Banamola, and it was the entire family which was killed. So we were living in Banamola in 1989, um, and um, in Banamola, we were the few Kashmiri Pandit families who were left there in Banamola, Srinagar. And there was a family, as I said, uh, of Ganjus, and, and the entire family was killed. I think it was like eight or 10 families, and they even had a small kid. I think the kid was like three or four year old kid. And um, when that family was killed, and that is the time we decided that we had to leave. So 
my mom, uh, my, my younger brother, uh, and my sister literally had to leave in a cab and leaving all the belongings. So even in fact, they did not even take their, um, you know, the, the money from the banks because banks were closed. So the only thing they had their belongings like their jewelry and they could not carry whatever they could carry in, in a taxi or a cab um, and had to leave uh, the place. And so they moved to Jammu. Now in Jammu, we had to find a place to live because there were so many families who had mi uh, migrated to, um, to Jammu. There was uh, hardly enough space. So it was pretty much living in camps. So that's what we had to do. Yeah.